Learning how to properly connect speakers to a power amplifier is a useful skill, whether you're playing on stage, working in a studio, or setting things up in a house of worship. It's not difficult once you know how. First of all, always begin with your power amplifier turned off before you make any connections. This will prevent loud clicks, pops, thumps, and so on from damaging your speakers as you're making your connections. Second, choose the proper type of cables for your amplifier and speakers. There are four different types that you'll encounter. You might run into bare wires, you might run into quarter inch plugs, banana connectors, or speak-on connectors. All these work very well, but I prefer speak-ons because they're the most secure and foolproof. They lock right into place. If you're using bare wires or banana connectors, ensure that you have the correct polarity for your connections, red to red and black to black. You'll also want to ensure that you have the proper cable for your connections. You don't need shielding because there's no danger of noise being picked up since there's no amplification that occurs after the signal leaves the power amplifier. It's at a very high level feeding into the speaker and noise is going to be at such a low level you'd never hear it. You'll also want to make sure to use a heavy gauge wire. My rule of thumb is the higher the power the cable will carry and the longer the cable run, the heavier the gauge should be. Typically you'll be looking at somewhere between 10 and 14 gauge speaker cable. It never hurts to have a heavier gauge, so always err on the side of a lower gauge number. Remember the lower the gauge number, the thicker the wire. Number three, for best operation and for the protection of your gear, ensure that you're matching the impedance of your speakers and your amplifier. An exception to this is when you're daisy chaining monitor speakers together one after another. In this case, ensure that the overall impedance of your monitor chain isn't lower than the lowest impedance that the amplifier can handle. Typically that's marked right on the back panel. Remember that impedances in series add, so two 8 ohm speakers in series total 16 ohms, while impedances in parallel, which is the way that most monitors are connected, divide by the number of speakers. So two 8 ohm speakers in parallel total 4 ohms. Number four, some amplifiers allow you to choose the operating mode of the amplifier. You might be able to operate in stereo or dual mono, or in bridged mono. In stereo and dual mono, you have two independent channels in the amplifier. These can accept two totally separate signals, or the left and right output coming from a mixer or preamp. Bridged mono uses the two channels of the amplifier working together to generate even more power. Consult your power amplifier's operating manual to ensure that you're connecting properly in bridged mono mode and ensure that your speakers can handle the amount of power that the amplifier can produce in that mode. Speaking of power, having too much clean power generally isn't a problem. What damages speakers is clipped signals that result from inadequate power, not enough power to cleanly reproduce the waveforms. So within reason, more clean power is always better. If your power amplifier has a level control, conventional wisdom is to turn it all the way up to maximize headroom. If you want to limit the output of your amplifier for some reason, you can turn the level control down. Number six, connect the cables to the amplifier and the speakers. Usually the amplifier connects directly to the cabinet that it's driving, but if you're using a subwoofer, the output of the amp may connect to the subwoofer first, where it's filtered to route the low frequencies to the sub and the mid and high frequencies to the top cabinet. Then you'll connect with a jumper from the subwoofer up to the top cabinets. Consult your subwoofer's manual for specific directions on how to make these connections. Number seven, make sure that the very last thing you turn on in your system is the power amp. Again, this will prevent loud clicks, pops, and noises from getting through and damaging your speaker. That's it, you're ready to go. If you're interested in learning more about audio concepts like this, visit Sweetwater.com's news and research page, or check out the other videos in this playlist.